I don't trust Liv Morgan or Dominic Mysterio. Something shady is happening between those two people. After Rhea Ripley got injured, Liv Morgan said she was going to take everything away from her. And one of the first things we saw was Liv Morgan staring down Dom in a backstage segment. But next week, we saw these two come out from the same locker room in a Jey Uso backstage interview. This was suspicious, but after last night, we might have confirmation that something is happening between Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. Some photos of Liv were posted, and you can see a purple bandana if you zoom in on her pocket. This is the same bandana that Dom wears that he most likely got from his mommy, aka Rhea Ripley. It could all be that Liv Morgan's playing mind games with Rhea. You know, she could theoretically walk into that room last week to try to steal Dom. Dom could have rejected, and then that's when she walks out making us think that there was something going on, but it was just her trying to ambush him. I don't know. And as for the bandana, she could have easily bought that off of Amazon or something like that and just put it in there to make it look like they are hanging out. I don't think that's the case though. I believe she's slowly taking them away and there are some shady things going on behind the scenes between Liv Morgan and Dom. When Rhea Ripley comes back, she's going to find out that Dom hasn't been so loyal to her and this could break her heart and make for great storytelling. This could be the best way to build that feud between Rhea and Liv while turning Rhea into a babyface. I think that would be huge. And who knows, we might even get another ladder match with the custody of Dom on the line. This time, instead of Rey and Eddie, it's gonna be it's gonna be Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. What do you guys think about this entire situation? Is Liv Morgan just playing mind games or did she really steal mommy's Dom Dom? Let me know in the comments below. With all of that being said, let's talk about last night's episode of Monday Night Raw, which was very good. I think the most important thing that we got to talk about first is Ilya Dragunov, who had the best match of the night with Ricochet. This made the crowd go crazy, and you can tell that they were loving it. They were chanting, this is awesome, throughout the entire thing. It was really great stuff. I watched some NXT, so I know that Dragunov is one of the best wrestlers that WWE does have, but now we learn that it translates well to the main roster on Raw. It only took this man two episodes to show that he's going to be a main event guy for years to come. I really think this guy could be a WWE champion in like 365 days. If I'm WWE, I would honestly pull the trigger and have him win the King of the Ring tournament. I know there will be some people who say that Gunther should win it, and I disagree. I think that Gunther is already established. He literally is a superstar who just had one of the best, or actually the best, Intercontinental Championship title reign of all time. You don't really need to make him the king of the ring. However, Elio winning this would turn him into a superstar within just a couple of months of being on the main roster. I honestly think it's worth a try. Let's see what WWE does. But speaking of Gunther, he did main event this episode of Raw with Sheamus. And as per usual, those two absolutely killed it. They are so good together. They have so much chemistry and they're incapable of having a bad match together. We need to see these two have a feud, like a real feud for the World Heavyweight or WWE Championship whenever Gunther wins that belt. And honestly, make it a best out of seven series feud. I don't care. The more Sheamus versus Gunther matches we get, honestly, the better. The opening match was also a really good King of the Ring qualifying match. Jey Uso defeated Finn Balor, and this was good. I thought it could have been a good idea to have the Prince actually become the King and then start a feud with Damian Priest that way for the World Heavyweight Championship, but that was clearly not the case. Jey Uso won this match instead, and then Drew McIntyre was seen backstage annoyed that he was pulled out of this bout, and we got that awesome one shot. You know, anytime WWE does that, it's always fire, but we got CM Punk driving into the arena once Drew McIntyre left. That shot was good, but the promo, unfortunately, was not. It was a really strange promo of CM Punk just begging Drew McIntyre to come back to the show. I've never seen something like this, and the crowd also was not feeling this either because they were quiet for most of it. It even looked like CM Punk was just trying to come up with stuff on the spot to say, and none of it was really delivering at all. There's no flow, there's no story, he's just out there honestly yapping. 
This was strange. It was not good. CM Punk usually does not miss with promos, but this unfortunately was one of those rare cases where he does. I honestly blame WWE for making him go out there and just giving him trash material. Like who really thought it would be a good idea for him to come out there, say he's waiting for Drew, only to look confused as to what to say next, and then also to make it even worse, Drew just never shows up. On top of that, he also made an AEW reference, which was whack, but the crowd literally didn't even say a word. There was no, whoa, because they didn't care. It means that most of WWE fans are not watching AEW or following the beef between CM Punk and that company. So I think Punk should stop with those references, not only because it's childish, but also because no one cares about AEW that goes to WWE shows. I was very disappointed with this CM Punk segment, and hopefully he does bounce back with his next promo, and I think he will because this was so bad that anyone can recover by having a good promo after it. Moving on from Raw, we have some bad news for Asuka. She joins the list of injured wrestlers and it really seems like everyone's just getting hurt in the WWE right now. What's going on? I don't know. But Dakota Kai actually replaced her in her match on last night's episode of Raw. She was reportedly injured for some time now and has been rushing through live events as well as a France Backlash pay-per-view and she's working through it. But now that she dropped the championship belt, the WWE is probably letting her heal now that she's no longer champion and has to defend that belt. Similar to Drew McIntyre and his elbow injury it isn't known when she will be back this is why i think it's important for wwe to actually have an off season i think after wrestlemania even if it's just for one month it would be so good for the wrestlers to just have 30 days maybe 30 45 days i don't know just to rest i also think it could help with some fatigue for the fans because once wrestlemania is over it's really hard to recreate any good feuds or storylines at that level or magnitude it would be better to have your fans crave the product and then return after four or five weeks later and that would instantly feel better than going straight into your next storylines 24 hours after wrestlemania with that being said i still do not think ww would ever do that mainly for financial reasons but i still think they should and finally the last story for today is that wwe has not re-signed jerry lawler to a new contract pw insider reported this Jerry Lawler is no longer with WWE as the company quietly declined to renew his contract, thus ending a relationship between the two that began back in late 1992. Under previous ownership, Lawler would have always been taken care of and connected with the company in some way, but this is a new era and that old company is dead. It really is a new WWE, and you have to realize that TKO is going to do everything that benefits them. Vince McMahon clearly had a great relationship with Jerry Lawler and was probably going to have a job for life if Vince was still running things, but he's not, and times have changed. Jerry Lawler is a free agent. I could see him trying to get a job with AEW. Who knows if AEW would even want him, but anyways, good luck to Jerry and his future. And that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and i'll see you all in the next video